resistance to changes in people's money habits as we are. Welcome to the, uh, I believe this is the 16th episode now of Truth Noir. And you might think, well, 16 episodes, all right, cool, but like, what's the big deal? But we're celebrating tonight because uh, this is the first episode we've done uh, since we broke a thousand views on, on the YouTubes. So thanks for the support, everyone. Um, so yeah, the mission continues, um, but... I have a special guest on tonight, and uh, so what I figured we'd do is do a little bit of a recap episode for, you know, those of you out there that haven't been, you know, voraciously watching all 15 other episodes. I get it. It's a lot of stuff. So we're doing a little bit of a recap. So I want to introduce my guest right now, a uh, new friend and uh, fellow seeker of the truth, Corey Johnson, a.k.a. Sunspot, Sunspot Jones. Glad to have him on the show. He's making his way out right now. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo. How you doing, man? Welcome so to the much show, man. The show. Thanks for being here, man. How you guys doing? Uh, nice to be in the place. Yeah, man. This is where the, uh, I like to call it the no bullshit zone. Uh, I like that. It might be infuriating. It might be kind of a bummer. It might, you know, make you not want to listen to me anymore. But it's, it's no bullshit. That's what we mean. So, so yeah, man. Um, for people new to the show, why don't you uh, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? And uh, well, my name is uh, Sunspot Jones. I'm a bit of a Renaissance man when it comes to just being a part of a lot of different things, whether it's writing, film, music, art. Um, or just seeking the truth, as you say. I can on just another vessel in life trying to show the light. Excellent, man. Well, you're in the right place, and I'm glad to have you in my company, man. Glad to be here. Um, yeah, because uh, the, uh, the truth is a thing that uh, society at large is in pretty short supply of, and it kind of sucks. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so what we do here is uh, we kind of point out certain aspects of society that we think could... Uh, use a little bit of work. We ask some questions about some stuff that, uh, you know, doesn't get a satisfactory answer in mainstream media. And, uh, and then we, uh, we also, uh, one of our segments is we do uh, what I like to call fuck face of the week. Mm -hmm. And that's a person that we call out because we think that they make a very good example of being someone that you should not be. Mm -hmm. Like, don't do what this guy does. So, so yeah, man, thanks for being here on a, a little bit of a recap episode, but uh, thanks, man. thanks for having me. Yeah, man, it's your first time on the show, so I figured we just like talk about some of the old stuff and uh, yeah. you know see what resonates. Um, as usually happens, a kind of running gag on my show is like the pictures that I prepare are always completely out of order. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, even though it's not the first topic I had intended. Um, uh, we do a little bit of uh, alien evidence okay. and, uh, you know, kind of looking at things that were dug up out of thousand year old sites, sites that are thousands of years old. And uh, we find stuff there that like kind of doesn't add up. So, right. so one of these 
was the uh, what they call the Baghdad Battery, and this was found on an archaeological dig from a, a site that um, the people that lived there were from about 4,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So this is 2000 BC, and what they found here is this clay jar, right? Pretty nondescript. You know, the, the king might have used it as a chamber pot or something, but they found copper rolled up and they found uh, residue from an acidic liquid. And so basically what that makes is when you have an acid and a, um, a conductive metal, that's a battery. Mm -hmm. And then when they, they put orange juice, like they kind of built one of these and they put orange juice and zinc in it and it measured a voltage of about six volts. Like it's a pretty big deal for a battery. And so, like, you could have done things like electroplating. Um, you could have uh, you could have powered hand tools with that. Although there's no real evidence of that, but like, the pyramids. yeah, you know, that's one of those great anomalies of the world where, you know, it's like obviously they're there. These mm -hmm. huge blocks were cut to precision. Precision. Modern day heavy machinery cannot move these. Right. So this was more advanced than that the people that built this stuff and so yeah it's, it's um a thing uh, there's a lot of things we don't know about especially when it comes to just history we think that people were prehistoric before edison before mm -hmm. tesla before great um inventors that actually learned how to conduct electricity energy you know and um yeah for sure we're just it just shows you how naive as people we are because these things are hundreds of years old, you know, and we we got to take you know take notice that there was life before your life, you know. In a yeah, baby. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and these societies that occurred were uh, you know thousands of years removed. It doesn't necessarily mean they were more primitive, right? And had less at their disposal, um, you know, because the things that they built back then we can't replicate today a lot of it like there there are some of these i don't have a picture of one but uh you know there's temples in india that were like carved out of mountainsides mm -hmm. you know and so uh so yeah man there's stuff like this and then uh there's there's some other cool stuff too this is uh this is one of my boys uh zechariah sitchin mm -hmm. and he was a scholar of ancient languages and he made his own uh, translations of the old uh, Sumerian tablets, and he was able to read like cuneiform and hieroglyphics and all these kinds of things. And so he uh, he's got some pretty way out theories about how like you know the chariots of the gods you know that spoke unto people like might have actually been aliens for kind of some of the stuff they did. I don't I don't have any doubt. That's true because really, I, I said this before, we're all aliens, we're all spirits, we're all life forms. And for you to think, for you to be as selfish of a thinker to think that it all came only from Earth is to be narrow-minded. Yeah. And not realize how vast the universe really is. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Carl Sagan was, you know, one of the guys that said that back in the 80s, probably when we were kids. And uh, now it's come out that uh, even like the Catholic Church, who have been super conservative on science and, uh, you know, whatever for the last <laughs> like 1800 years, uh, have even endorsed the notion that, that if, they put it this way, they said, if life exists on other planets, that does not negate the existence, the existence of God. Yeah. And so, for taking such a hardline stance over the last 1,800 years to, eh, if it did, it doesn't mean God doesn't exist. Like, that's a pretty big admission on the Vatican, you know, and, and they have their own astronomy department. They, they know. I think God is the biggest hoax on planet Earth. It was, God was created don't get me wrong, I believe there's a higher power. There's something that looks over us all that, For sure. you know, there's something to believe in, of course. I mean, I can't give up on that thought, but the idea of God through the Bible or through 
what other people that actually profit off the Bible have to say. I don't know For if sure. I really believe that. And when it comes to the Vatican, you know, uh, corporation, the Vatican, the corporation. Yeah, <laughs> they, they that, are a business. They are know, a huge their business. Own bank account that can't even be checked by anybody except them. They have their own police force. They have their own, you know, basically ruler of the world, the Pope. Yeah, and, they are a huge sovereign force in the yeah, world, absolutely. And, and it's just like, religion was created <clears throat> like feudalism. It was made to control the people. That's it, you know? We're the yeah. serfs in a lot of ways. And these people, are controlling us by old idealisms, old traditions, old ways of thinking, and they keep us trapped because we're so naive. We're so naive, like you were saying, the Baghdad, you know, batteries, you know. We can't even fathom that maybe there was, you know, a battery back in the day because we are the only people that Right, because we're the, we're the pinnacle of society. Exactly. You know, the people couldn't have been that advanced back then. Exactly, it's sad, you know, and it's selfish. They're yeah. very self-centered and arrogant because we don't want to believe that people were just, if not even more, as smart as us. Yeah, absolutely, man. And uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's one of those topics that uh, that we've come to define on the show as cognitive dissidence. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, and it basically means the the, the simple definition of it is. Um, mm -hmm holding two completely contrary notions in your head and believing them both to be true. Yeah. And that's what they're trying to force on us, really. Like, you know, there's this whole, you know, go out there, be yourself, American dream, anything is possible. But then also you get the bombardment in the media of like, fear, fear, 9-11, fear, trade away all your freedoms for the illusion of security. Oh, wait, fucked up shit still happened. Fear, fear. And, and it's it, paralysis. Yeah, it, and it, it on, a, on a mental level, mm -hmm. it breaks entire uh, nations, yeah. really. Like, they, they take over the news waves, right? So you can't, even if you're just watching networks, you can't, you can't escape it. You know, when something terrible happens, What's in your face? you're going to get bombarded by it yes. for weeks at a time, yes. you know, and they're going to play okay. with your emotions and mm -hmm. you're going to get most of the people saying, oh, we got to go do something. This horrible thing happened. They rile us up. It's a corral. Yeah, to the point where we don't even think about where it is that we're going to war yeah. to. We're just like, Iran. fuck it, let's do it. Iran, Vietnam, yeah. Korean War. I can keep going. Yeah, man, all of it. And uh, the yeah, these things, you know, like like you were hinting at, like history repeats itself. We allow it to because people don't bother to read history. They certainly don't teach an accurate version of it in schools. Yeah. And so, um, you know, like I get they it. Give you so much. A lot of people aren't to blame for some of the stupid voting choices they make or. Mm -hmm. The you know the friends they lose expressing certain opinions on Facebook. Which I'll admit I'm guilty of it, but you know I, I hope I'm on a, a little bit more correct side of it. Um, but the best part about that, what you just said, is that you're expressing your opinion. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are afraid to express their opinion in 2015. It's so True. easy just to be neutral. It's so easy to not really have anything to say. You know, it's so easy just to almost be invisible. Yeah, well, you know, and especially when you think about, um, you know, any like. Now it's coming up more than ever, more and more these days, that speaking out against your government is a pretty dangerous thing to do. Like, it's let's, always been dangerous. Like, but we're, we're at a unique time politically, because I, I don't know if, if you heard this on the news, but um, Saudi Arabia is one of the candidates to be elected to the Human Rights Council branch of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Now, these are people that behead thieves as, uh, or maybe they cut off their hands or something, but they they're still... They're the richest country in the world. They're the richest country, and they also, um, they have these barbaric execution yeah, practices. Yeah, public beheadings, and public armed... Public, yeah, mutilations. 
Um, they still stone people to death. Yeah. Um, Women still have to cover up. They're still yeah, they're in. an ultra conservative, and it's like like think about this, people. You want to talk about conservative politics? That's the most conservative place in the world. Yeah. Is that like is that what you want? Like we had we had we had governments run a long time ago that were uh, very religious um, and. Uh, and very wealthy. They were run by a very few wealthy people that were involved in an organization called, I don't know, the Catholic Church or the Holy Roman Empire. Yeah. And it was called the Dark Ages for a reason. Yeah. There were plagues and there was no advancement in anything. And in fact, societies took a, a step back by like a period of development, probably. It stagnated for like, you know, five, six hundred years yeah. worth of quality societal development time that just didn't happen because people were burned at the stake for being witches if they had different ideas yeah. and uh, uh, part of that was disagreeing with your government when it got a little too big for its britches and that's what we're having again we're having nations of this earth representatives from these places being appointed as human rights council for the UN whose nation that they are from still crucifies people, like literally like, like fucking crucifies people. Uh, they behead people, they stone people to death, they cut off hands. This is, you know, these are places where they're, um, uh, I, I don't know how to say, their legal practices are about three to 4,000 years old and date back to the time of King Hammurabi, which like, you know, if you ever heard about Hammurabi's code in, in school, was the ancient law structure, and it was one of the first of its time, and it, uh, it was a little bit more fair than things that had come out before it. But it was still one of those eye for an eye, um, here's what you do if you want to sell slaves kind of things that were commonly practiced at the time they don't really have anything to do with where society should be today. And there's no fucking reason why we should be letting a country that still abides by those principles decide what gets decided for the rest of the world as far as their human rights practices. I mean, that's true. <laughs> right? at, the same, at the same time, I don't want to country bash. I think Saudi Arabia has a lot of good people in it too. Absolutely. It's just that the people with money often are the most fucked up, the mentally, and that's in any country. Very and true. They have people that are running that country that want to control their people to the fullest, 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 you know, even in the bedroom. For sure, yeah. And well, yeah, and then what are they trying to do here? We don't but, yet, but, yeah, <laughs> but, but there's, there's people there's people making that noise, though, that yeah. are like, you know. We do it in a different way. We guilt you in a different way. Right. We, we do it a different <laughs> way. It's the same thing all in the all in the end. It's people with money controlling our mentality, controlling the way we should think about each other. Absolutely. And that's where it's wrong. <sighs> yeah, so you guys, yeah, and, and I certainly wasn't trying to speak against the you know vast majority of inhabitants of a certain right. country. Absolutely Just because not. There, there's a lot of Muslim bashing right now, and I feel like you're still not looking at who's really to blame. Very true. Yeah. And yeah, no, it, it's an important thing to clarify. I, I, I was speaking specifically towards the practices of the government. Yeah, of course. And I, and I never support the government of almost any Every nation. <laughs> yeah, because like, like they've been infiltrated, you guys. Like all of, all of the leaders of these world, and, like, and it, gets, it gets fed to us like it's an entire nation's worth of people that does this stupid shit, and it's not. It's very few people playing a game. Um, and yeah, I want to make that clear, it, well, you know, is so that if I ever knock any other country, I'm not talking about the citizens of that country. I'm talking about, like, the leadership, maybe a hundred people in yeah, that country exactly. that, like, play games all over the world. And these are games that cost people's lives, and they cost people trillions of dollars worldwide in, um, in taxes that go to fund these horrible atrocities all over the place. Yeah that if you, if you knocked on people's doors and asked them like, 
hey, would you like to pay to have someone murdered today? They would say, no, of course not. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you yeah, know? People don't realize that once you leave America, people are all about family, you know, more than anything. And then their families are riled up by these corrupt governments that tell them that their family needs to do this to protect everything their country's about. But, you know, a lot of times these people are just only about family. You know, and then they think they have to follow through. I mean, it happens in America. You know, why do you think all the kids like enlisted in World War II? Like, because they thought that they were doing, you know, something to save their family. You know? Yeah, and for it's sure. Just, it's just weird how we allow the corruption to control our mentality and our families and who we are and our destiny. You know? Yeah, man. It's, it's a sad moment. It is. They're, you know, it's, they're, they're dark times. Um, you know, they're not, uh, you know, maybe they're not darker than times have been in the past. Like, yeah, certainly we're, we're not in a world war yet. I mean, in fact, I don't know, let's give it a couple weeks and see what happens. But we've had a, a fairly long period of time where the world entire uh, was not at war. Um, because franchising is really big now. Yeah, well, you know, the corporations are going to start doing war with each other pretty yeah. soon, and that's going to... You ever see that movie, Idiocracy, man? I love that movie, man. Sitting if, on the lazy boy taking his shit and slurping on the slurping. Yeah, like, is, is, he lives in this uh, little tiny, you know, probably the size of this stage house, and uh, and he just watches TV and is... His, uh, his chair that he sits in has a drink dispenser and he's just sucking on soda. There's no water, there's no water fountains, there are only Gatorade fountains. Yeah, yeah, because Gatorade <laughs> bought all of the utilities like, like Nestle is trying to do. And then the chair that he sat in, the seat of it was a toilet, so he just never had to leave. Never had to leave, just follow what the TV told him. And, uh, and yeah, man, Mike Judge, uh, he, which, yeah, who you'll remember from writing uh, Beavis and Butthead and The Family Guy. Basketball or basketball. Um, those were the South Park guys. Wait, so isn't Mike, oh, Mike Judge is from Beavis and Butthead. I'm mm -hmm. tripping. Yeah, true. yeah. I thought it was the same. Although, although both of them, both of those groups, very fantastic um, yeah. social commentators. Definitely. And uh, so, yeah, Mike Judge, Idiocracy, it's happening. Like, right. he is... He is a prophet of Camacho. our ages, yeah. Dwayne Elizondo, <laughs> Mountain Dew, Herbert Camacho. <laughs> That's what it's gonna, you know, but at least it was honest. Like, all of his sponsors that he put in his name, you know, right. like like Meta World Peace right. or whatever. Right. Um, he's, he's Panda, or Panda Love or something, because he played China last year. Oh, did he change it again? Yeah, well, he wanted to, and now he's back into the Lakers, and he's gonna be Meta World again. Oh, okay. Yeah. God bless you, son. Go for it. Yeah, man. I just remember that. <laughs> um, but Shout yeah. out to my boy Julian for just coming in. We're going to have to get him in soon. Oh, hell yeah, man. Um, when we get to the alien part. Well, yeah, you know, we're actually wrapping up the alien part right now. So um, if we tell you what, man, like if you don't mind doing it a little sloppy, just grab a chair and bring it up. Yeah, and uh, and and uh, as he's doing that, why don't you go ahead and, and talk him in? Okay. Right now, uh, I'm gonna bring in my boy Julian Brooks. He's uh, one half of the Temper Twins group that I'm in, and also he's in a group called Control Burn. Excuse me. And um, they have a lot of social commentary in their music. Thanks for being on the show. I, uh, um, Corey here was telling me that you had a lot to say about aliens and conspiracies and stuff. Yeah, kind of. Masons. Yeah, Mason. You know, the whole thing. I go down the rabbit hole of conspiracy. Excellent, kind of man. Working it into the hip hop. You, uh, ever, uh, you ever hear about Zechariah Sitchin? Yep, read uh, 12th Planet, read a few of his books. Excellent, um, man. Yeah, that's all of it right there. You know, Art Bell, Coast to Coast, AM, um, Project okay, Camelot, sure. you know. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I study all that, and then I start writing, writing raps about it. Yeah, I, I went to see, uh, so you're familiar with David Wilcock, too? Yep, Wilcox. Yeah, me and uh, Adam and I went to uh, go see one of his uh, seminars out in Albuquerque okay. a couple of years ago, so that was dope. Wow. That's dope. And yeah, man, that guy's all over the place, cool. you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He's got, got a lot of uh, inside connections and just uh, his, his sort of concept of and presentation of the sort of behind the scenes, uh, you know, kind of stuff is... You know, he puts it in a really fun way. He's like, dude, it's like a fucking circus. 
you know, like everyone plays, everyone plays their part and everyone's, you know, just like in a, in some kind of, uh, you know, bullshit, like phony wrestling match, you have your heel and you have your face and, uh, you know, so right now Rush is playing the heel, <laughs> you know, this, uh, the rest of the world might see them as the face, but, you know, and we're the heel most of the time. And, uh, you, you know, everyone wants to be American. Well, yeah, they all, you know, I think I think everyone loves the concept of what America used to represent, but I think people love the idea, the concept of America just being able to come here and just wild the fuck out and do whatever you want. Where you can't do that in a lot of countries. You're gonna get, you know, grief down. You know, if you're a third world country, a lot of times you're controlled by tradition, like India or China or like you know Arabia, like we're talking about. Well, Arabia's probably the first one. But, you know, True. these countries don't have the media um, freedom to even allow them to think that they can do whatever they want. So a lot of people just love the idea of being able to do whatever they want and come to America and not get judged. And, I mean, for that, I give America the applause, you know? Yeah, but, yeah, they, they've been, uh, we've been riding on that image for quite a while. Yeah. And, uh, but I think... Uh, I think the actual, because that used to actually be a true statement, mm -hmm. you know, like you could come here and make it, and uh, you know, these days I feel like it's a little bit more difficult to do that. I mean, but you still, know? in the end, you can be and do whatever you want. I believe that in America, but at the same, For sure. at the same time, you're going to be sterile when you get in. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to have any kind of tradition. You're not going to have any kind of honor. You're not going to have any kind of self-respect because in order to make it in america you have to not give a fuck about anything a good example is the guy that bought the uh, the age drug like a couple weeks right. ago and that's the american way right yeah, Capitalism. absolutely yeah, let's take a 13 dollar pill that saves people's lives and let's jack it up you know what i actually uh, it'll, uh, it'll, <laughs> that's the american way right? it'll be skipping a little bit ahead but i actually uh, we do a segment on the show called fuck face of the week that's scott walker he was a previous fuck face of the week okay um but uh Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy. Martin Shkreli, this shit. piece of shit. Was that the guy you were talking about? Yes, that's him. <laughs> Have you seen his tweets? Yeah, him, Have you seen his tweets? Yeah, They're man. Insane. He, uh, we used that picture and we made him our fuck face of the week last week. Yeah, I and, saw uh, the news. He's, he's really serious about making that profit. You know? He said Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to mess with, or whatever the term right. is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't be mad at him because America did this. And people want to be mad at him for doing that, but in America, you can't do shit to him. Yeah, and you know what, man? That is, that is a very true statement. You know? Like, you, yeah, you have the opportunity to attempt whatever you like, but, it's, but this is what America rewards. It rewards pieces of shit like this. Mm -hmm. Instead of being like, oh, dude, you wrote a really cool song. I'm going to put this everywhere. Like, kind of the way it used to be. I mean, there were other, you know. Still, um, you think, though, in America. There were other atrocities in America and, you know, discrimination that happened. Right. And, it, you know, I'm not saying the 50s were a great time. Well, but, that what, that's why Adam said earlier, I was, <laughs> he said, if you had a time, you know, what would you be your favorite thing? I was like, time travel. But. For, to a yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, 1970s something. Maybe I had to start in the 80s. Right? <laughs> back, dude, really, it's <laughs> fucked up. As a time traveler, I can only go to like 81 and still be fucked, but better. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, this is a malaria drug, right? It was originally a malaria drug. Uh, it, it was, was used to treat used to treat malaria, right. but then it and also now, they found that it works for people with, with diminished AIDS. immune systems. Right. So it's uh, AIDS, like he said, right. and also uh, cancer patients. Right. right. So he was like, "Okay, yo, I, I see, like, there's a selling potential that we're not seeing," and they just got it on the loophole because really it wasn't like ever like this is the AIDS drug. Is it just something that people slept like they? Oh, this can actually help with that too. And he's like, "Well, if it can, well, let me make money off it." Yeah. It's fucked up. There's nothing wrong though. At the same time, because it's American way. Yeah, you There's can't. A lot of you wrong, can't sue them for right, it. Right, right. There's a lot you of wrong. As good people, we're like, "What in the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> but you, but you know what? You can still do in America yeah. is you can still mail them boxes of dog shit. Right. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. There's a lot of people with, with uh, <laughs> that. Have that probably don't like him at all right now. <laughs>
<laughs> well, it was like that <laughs> that guy that uh, that guy that killed Cecil the lion. Uh, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 this is one thing you know. Since we're talking about it, uh, this is another thing I, I like to bring up because, yeah, sure, we talk about a bunch of fucked up shit, but I also try to make the show about like what. Okay, well, Norm, you talk about a bunch of fucked up shit. What can we do? Right. And so we do a little bit of that too. And one of them is, um, you know, actually being active. You know, that asshole being that killed that guy that killed Cecil the lion. People mailed him stuffed animals, and they told him he was a shit coward. And um, and people stopped going to his place of business. He he had to closed down shop for a while and he had to, you know, kind of efface himself and, you know, think about what he had done. But it's so sad that motherfuckers feel that way over a line and there's people getting killed with their hands up in America. Well, and Everybody I mean, cares about everything outside of America except what that's happens That's very true, America. too. And that's what's sad. But I think that's starting to turn around because, you know, as cheeseball as it is, like, the fact that people realize that they could get aggro about a thing you know, that they could rally behind. You know, just like this stupid piece of shit. People, like, this, because of this asshole, we became the United States of fuck this guy. Right. Overnight. Right. There, there wasn't any... Young kid. I mean, I don't even know if I could even take him serious all the way. Like, even my anger towards him is someone that's older and richer that's put him in position of the media or something for this moment because it doesn't even make sense. Well, yeah, like, that is true, but, like, like what if... Um, what if by way of what he was doing, he was like killing your grandma? In the end, you know, like, I'm not saying this guy is cool. He's a piece of shit. For what he did. <laughs> There's no doubt. I'm just saying in America, and if you're a young American especially, you have no traditional values for a lot of shit. Because That's it's true too. Given to you. You know, you're like in the iPad, iPhone generation where I was saying before, we don't even exist as people. We're just like numbers. So I can't even work Metro or met, what does it says on Facebook, Metronics, metrics, metrics. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like a thing of I want to be upset, but I don't even think he even understands what he did already. If he's the one that's really in control, I don't even believe he's the one who actually made the thing happen money wise. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't make sense. He's just the face of that moment. Well, or or he might only understand it as money. Yeah. You know. And, and, then, and then it leads you to believe that the only reason why he lowered the price was probably also because of money. Right. People are like, well, we'll fucking boycott you. Did we'll, he lower the price now? He did a little He's bit. He's saying a little, a little bit. But I, but I doubt it's uh, come back down to the price that it was. You know? And so, yeah, so, so we, do, uh, we do that segment also. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left on the hour, so... Uh, one thing we were talking about last time was the for-profit prison system in America mm -hmm. and how it's like it's not saving the government any money. It's not helping you, a person that's uh, run a little afoul of the law, get back on your feet and participate in society. It is manufactured to get you to go back mm -hmm. to increase your prison sentences while you're in there. Mm -hmm. Because it's a business. yeah, it's absolutely a business, and um, some of the figures that I found were pretty startling. Um, the fee that private prisons get paid to house you while you're uh, while you're being a particular individual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's like Section Eight. It's, it's automatic money. That yeah, costs. it's uh, it's higher than what a government-run facility gets paid to house you, so it costs more there by the order of about $6,000 per inmate per year. So if you have a facility that houses 20,000 inmates, that's a big fucking deal. That's yeah. a lot of money. You know, that's a huge drain on the taxpayers that didn't need to be, right? And they're doing labor inside where they're getting paid 30 Yeah, man. <laughs> so where is that money going as well? And yeah, and that's, a, that's another thing they don't report is that there are companies you know, because you have like, uh, you know, if you come to owe money while you're in prison, well, you know, they let these people work it off and they teach them a trade. They don't, they don't teach you a trade so much as they give you a single menial task to do, whether it's stamping a machine press or, you know, whatever. But 
um, you know, when you consider that like all of the license plates in America basically are made by prisoners, um, there are corporations like Whole Foods, you know, like Whole Foods that charge you a lot of money for the uh, produce that you buy. Whole paycheck, yeah. That, yeah, that's the that's the joke that goes along with it, and uh, you know, rightfully so for the most yeah. part. Um, Organic is the biggest sham there is. They, yeah, a lot of the uh, a lot of the labor that picks those organic crops, prison system. Mm -hmm. Oh well, we pass that savings along to the customer. No, you fucking don't, assholes. Right. Yeah, for, they're from Texas, right? Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Um, yeah. 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 Their first one was uh, the were they from there originally? Yeah, they're yeah. from Texas. Um, you know, so um, yeah, there's that. There's a lot of abuses that go on, and when you consider that, like. Prisons are not nice places to be, you know, like there's there's rape that goes on. There is uh, getting beaten by officers that goes on. There's the breakage of a man, of American society that goes on in there that ruins. Everyone that's going to come out of there, 85%, they're going to be worse and they're going to be broken and they're going to be a fucking terrible person to society. Worse than any terrorist that you're looking at to kill. You know, and well, it's sad. Absolutely, and that's what that's what is created when you treat someone with that kind of disrespect yeah. for that kind of period of time that a lot of these people are in for. You're going to have a person come out of that facility that is it's very a reflection of what they were treated like. Yeah, they're going to be ill-equipped to treat anyone with respect, and yeah. they're going to be ill-equipped to function normally in society. And you know what? It's not their fault. Right. The government trying to make money and it's, control you. And, con and continue slavery with a loophole. Yeah. It's a loophole of slavery. Yeah, yeah, yeah loophole in the 13th Amendment, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, um, you know, but we come back to it. There are things that you can do. Um, in this case, one of these things is a uh, concept of, it's called jury nullification. Mm -hmm. And basically what this is, is you, the American citizen who is called to sit on a jury, you have the ability to nullify a law. You don't get to erase it from the books, but what you do get to do is if you're sitting on a jury and someone is convicted of a nonviolent crime for which the punishment is something that you think is excessive, you have the ability, the power, and I would dare say the obligation to find that person not guilty, even though they may technically, by the letter of the law, be guilty. So this goes to people with drug offenses. Were they, were they robbing you, or were they just in possession of a thing that is deemed by the government to be illegal? Even though GlaxoSmithKline sells all the legal yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, what is it? Um, I, uh, I think it was like Baron Rothschild or one of the Rockefellers, and he says, give me control of a country's money supply, and I care not who makes their laws. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, yeah, you get to make all of the drugs, and some of these drugs are super addictive. Some? You guys. Oxycontin. Most of them. Suboxone, yeah, all the, the, the analgesics, all the legal yeah. painkillers are derived from drugs that if you had the organic form of that couldn't hurt you nearly as much, you would be guilty of a felony. Yeah. Yeah. But why yeah, is that? You know, they're, they're selling legal drugs <laughs> and making a lot of money off And why are psychedelics that expand your mind, like some of the, you get the, the most time in jail for like LSD or mushroom psychedelics? Yeah, you get, you you get know, felony. Yeah. You know, in some states what I heard was if you are in possession of a certain quantity of hallucinogens like mushrooms or LSD, the conviction or the, the charge is attempted murder because if you give that substance to someone who has a bad trip and tries to kill themselves, you are responsible for that being the seller or, or whatever purveyor. That is 10 years a hit. That's I've heard something like that. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. If they don't want us to open Ten our minds. Ten years a hit. Why well, do think ayahuasca, they're, they're, they're a stranglehold on that as well. Yep. You know? Yeah, something that indigenous peoples across the world, like in anywhere you go, the, you know, a tribe is allowed to have their shamanic right. substance, you know. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones that are allowed. 
the Indians are allowed a lot of things, you know, respectfully so, but I'm saying that, you know. Well, yeah, pay, well, whatever it is. Like, isn't even an Indian usually, substance, I heard, you know. That was just um, something that was created later that they say. Cause I used to think, like, it was the Indians that took peyote, but it's really not. Yeah. Mm. From cactus, so it's a peyote yeah, it's a cactus. naturally occurring thing because yeah. the peyote button, yeah, comes yeah. off of a cactus. Uh, I'm not sure, but I mean, I think the world over, even in places where you know, like here, a lot of these substances are illegal, the indigenous peoples, whatever you call them, you know, whether they're the Aborigines or the you right, know First Nations up in Canada or right. Native Americans yeah. in Canada or in in America, are able allowed. allowed to do substance for ritual purposes that we are not because for religious beliefs i don't know if, just to, on a, to I just switch subject real quick on sure, the yeah. whole mars water thing that happened and then they, yeah, they released that statement and then later that day putin and obama met and everyone just talked about yep well, stop putin, thinking about it let's not talk about the water on <laughs> mars that was a soupy water a briny water that right. most likely has like Last things time. going on in it which is you know it's like and they just switched that off, and we were looking at the United Nations and Obama and Putin glaring at each other. I think I'd rather hear about the water on Mars and what's happening on there than, you would, than the same so old would you get that one one way ticket. <laughs> right, it's a one way right. ticket. It's I'd right. do it, man. You right. do it. I would. I wouldn't do the first one. I'd, if right. they offered it for the second voyage, I would go. Yeah, I don't know I if that crab is. There's <laughs> some kind of crab picture on there. If that thing is real, I don't know. They got to figure out what that thing is. I would. I would have to. Well, you know, honestly, like I figure it would be one of those. Like if they built some monster ship that held like a million people. Just, if I if I if I got on there and like everyone was all like stupid and weird looking, I'd be like, nope, that's probably the batch they're trying to. Right. They'll probably send well, a few of those. Sure. <laughs> I think like they're getting rid of this earth pretty soon. Yeah. We've ruined it, or at least they're trying to make us. It's either two things: either they're trying to make us believe that they've ruined the earth, so they're gonna get all the dumb people to leave, or they've ruined it and they're gonna get all the elitist people and get the new world. You know, they're talking about the super earths. And all this shit. Right, yeah. We've seen it years ago, man. It's all bullshit. Any information that we find out now, they knew years, decades ago. Like, even this iPhone, this shit ain't new. This shit's been around for yeah. like decades. Well, you have a good point because someone was saying uh, the, the, the water on Mars they knew about for years, but they released it on that day because of the blood moon. They do stuff in terms of uh, right. ceremonial occultism, and there was the blood moon, and the next day they released the statement. About, Absolutely, yeah. And well, and that's kind of what lets you know, too. Like, these are people who have different philosophical beliefs than you, they do things according to mathematical patterns mm -hmm. that you have no idea why, you know, and, and it, and it, the, the truth gets out there that uh, you know these people do not believe the same things as you and it kind of boils down to like the founding fathers of this country you know everyone's like oh this is a Christian nation no it wasn't no this nation was not founded by Christians but CNN sure did look like the 700 Club last week. Oh my all God! Week right? long. It was like nothing but ceremonies yeah. and popage. Hey, you know what, you guys? I hate to I hate to cut this off. Um, you know, but we're we're getting to the end of our hour. It was cool as fuck hanging out with you guys. Nice Always good to so meet much. new friends Definitely. and have a beer with people that are just interested in in uh, talking nice about. Shit. Yeah, couldn't have said it better. Yeah. Um, nice so shit. we'll uh, we'll close here and. Uh, Say thank you for watching. Wherever you guys are going, get there safe tonight. We'll see you next time. Hopefully with these guys again one of these days. Take care. Cheers. Stay alive. Sometimes we got to wake up and get baked. I don't fake that's why they call it Saturday. Waking up late or we never go to sleep. Yeah, it gets real deep. Take a hit of this green, the pews to make the third I see. Lies leave the lip to the ones that make laws legit. But they cause a shit. I'ma take a hit of this OG and sip on this here brandy. Spit on those that underhand me. Understand me, keep a family, keep a peoples, keep it equals, keep away from the graves and sheep folks. Kinda do the pace from the sequel. Where's your soul? Cause it's your vehicle. You don't know what that's hysterical. What's a miracle? If you can hear me though, want the beat to go, want the weed to grow. Wanna talk about the shit that you need to know. See you at the show, put your hands up, yo. I the man when you leave you understand me though. Uh, uh. There's an odor in the land and the ogres overran the village It was a Wall Street village Came with the villains and nobody kill it We all feel it in the king of Godzilla No foundation, just a nation that's sick with a patient Just bricks for the mazes, transfix, no one's face in reality Cause reality would cause fatalities around the principalities I'm not deciding what I'm writing this loud enough to get rid of your maladies yeah. 
And I'ma always fight the beast and won't rest the beast until the bullshit cease. You can get your lease in your pot of bland with it still your dreams. Yeah. Or you like the grease and the oil in their machine. Careening and coming to closure. Call me crazy, but it's like I told you. Are you a real soldier? Are you find some lie that a government soldier? Yeah. I'm on a road trip through this bitch Can you talk this shit and still get rich? Or do you wanna face down in a ditch With a cement shoes like they do with a cinch? I can't keep these words to myself I'ma live every day like a 2012 I don't care if they know what I will I'ma live every day like a 2012 I'ma keep on giving them hell I'ma live every day like a 2012 I'ma show these motherfuckers what's real I'ma live every day like a 2012 There's a rumble in the mist that they never can resist It's growing and they know what I'm knowing as long as we keep going and we flow around the credit we're better too. We stay in debt until they pass it on the hill. They're coming for the kill with a brand new bill that means nothing still. Do you have free will? Are you thrilled by the set that they built? Cause they vets in this shit and they kill many souls that still living whose stories not told yet. They'd be gone if they knew what I was knowing, yeah. They'd be gone far from the microphone, yeah. Cause a dawn is a sad thing to waste. Can you handle when it's shown when it's all in your face? Can you handle when it's on when it's real at the base? When it ain't the same place and you just can't escape. It's just too late for the ones that wait. I'ma fill my plate, I'ma spill my drink. Could be on the brink of something I think. Ain't got time to blink before the whole shit sinks. I can't keep these words to myself. I'ma live every day like a 2012. I don't care if they know what I will. I'ma live every day like a 2012. I'ma keep on giving them hell. I'ma live every day like a 2012. I'ma show these motherfuckers what's real. I'ma live every day like a 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play to the many ways in the days to the face, living in this hell. In this hell. Stayed on my knees, I pray through the days, only time will tell. Only time will tell. I until it never grows if I won't excel, fears no guardrails. No guard Slow, but I'ma get that ghost that I call my soul to share. I know the appetite of the deadly parasite. It burns you up inside, cause insecurity and pride. So I got to go, I'ma press the go, and I'ma just explode, I'ma push the flow. That's just the most sound, very dope, levitate the road, I know breaking cold. That's Jones, this song just don't from home, cause I don't know who they are. Let's song just dumb, the scum, wanna break you down, no, not tonight. Profiling, gotta keep it right in time, we see what God will find me. Synchronizing, planning alignment, masons go and watch us dying. Cause they got their own escape plan, gone to the next dimension. New civilization, racial clean and guard the semen demons i know the people that be doing this i watch them closely what you gonna do cause they coming for your ass i can't keep these words to myself i'ma live every day like a 2012 i don't care if they know what i will i'ma live every day like a 2012 i'ma keep on giving them hell i'ma live every day like a 2012 i'ma show these motherfuckers what's real i'ma live every day like a 2012 Zero, one, two.